Hi guys, John Bailey here, Gemstone artist and founder of the Fascinating Academy. Welcome back into the studio and to another video on Gemstone architecture and sequencing. In a Facebook group for fasteners, I recently saw a discussion about the long and steel design called the Super Emerald. If you have data view, you can look it up at 04.040. It's an emerald shaped design with this uh, emerald-ish crown. It's actually a scissors crown, but an emerald shaped design with a brilliant like pavilion underneath it. And that design might seem a little intimidating at first uh, until you realize that it's an ECED and that that's pretty easy to do if you understand ECED. And that's the reason I'm doing this video. So I tweaked the design just a little bit to organize the sequencing and to just adjust it a little bit to make it more useful for teaching and to show how ECED can work and also to, to do a couple of more tips and tricks on sequencing. I'm posting the PDF of the tweak to design for public download and site members can also download the GEMCAD file as well. Now my way of sequencing this design isn't the only way to do it. There's, there are designs where there's only one way to get from here to there. This isn't one of them. There's lots of different ways to do this design and have it turn out. This is just going to be my way. As a thank you to the people who help support the site through membership and these sorts of instructional videos, the members version of this video includes detailed explanations for why I do it the way I do. I'm going to talk about the advantages of doing it my way and the disadvantages of doing it some other ways. I'm also going to include some explanations and tips and tricks, sequencing strategies that can be applied to almost any design to save time, to prevent errors, and to help make your meats sharper. The public version of the video is just the fast and simple explanation of ECED and to show my sequencing for the design. So if you just want the fast and dirty, look at the public version. If you want the details, you need to be a site member and look at the site members version. So what the heck is ECED anyway? If you look at some online glossaries, you'll see that it's supposed to mean equal center to edge distance. And okay, but that doesn't really explain what it is or how I'm supposed to use it to help build this stone. I want to back up for a second and talk about the difference between modern precision faceting and what I call primitive faceting. In other words, the difference between using a, a handpiece machine like a Raytech or a, a mass machine, a precision mass machine like an Ultratech or a Facetron, what's the difference in how we're cutting on those compared to, for instance, JPEG faceting? In primitive faceting, we're placing facets around the rough. The facets are conforming to the shape of the rough, which means they can drift to the side. And that's why you see some of these primitive cut stones with a lopsided pavilion that drifts way over. And you've got an oval, but the bottom of the pavilion is way over towards one end. That's because the facets are placed to the rough, not to the center axis of the stone. This is the distinction. The placement of facets precisely around our center axis, that kind of defines modern faceting. Any two facets on any given row, from the girdle down or up, those two facets should be a precise equal distance from the center axis of the stone. This begins to give us a clue about what ECED means. Here's how we use that ECED concept in sequencing this design. First, we're going to establish the width of the gem by cutting the girdle facets on the 96 and 48 indexes. We're going to calibrate the length by cutting the girdle facets on the 24 and 72 indexes to the correct length. And without moving the faceting head, we're going to cut the corners and to the same depth of the girdle plan. The corner girdle facets the same distance from the center axis as the end facets. That's the ECED. Working from the girdle plan then, we're going to cut the pavilion corner break facets first to establish the location of the girdle. Next, we'll cut facet number two, the end pavilion break facets, to form a level girdle at least across the end of the stone. 
Now, I don't cut the brake facets on 96 and 48 next. Instead, I cut the intermediate row on index number 22, like that. Facet number four are the companions to the number three row, and they meet this way. I know this looks odd without the index 96 brake facet in place, but this is how we do it. Next, we're going to cut the 24 and 72 indexes of facet number five. And I'll use these to dial in any tiny adjustments to the angle required due to any machine tolerances or tiny issues because we can use these three meets to figure that out and then precisely place these two facets at the same angle and mast height. That leaves us a floating meet here that we might adjust when we bring in this brake facet finally. And that's our pavilion. We begin the crown in the same fashion as the pavilion by cutting the corner brake facets first. This lays survey stakes for us to look at as we're bringing in the end and side brake facets to monitor the meet points here and here for any issues that might have arisen during our transfer. A uh, cheater zeroing issue or a transfer problem, it's going to show up really broadly right there. Next, facets D meet the girdle. They're pointy, we want to be careful. And facets E, likewise, be careful at the girdle. Finally, F and G facets. We want to be really careful of this meet with F and G facets to make sure we don't blow this up and float the table in very carefully. Again, watching these meets. If this set of meet points with facets G and F at the corner of the table. If those meet points are blown up, it's going to be really glaring in the finished stone, so we want to be really careful with that. And that is the sequencing and ECED of the Long and Steel Super Emerald design as we've tweaked it and sequenced it for presentation here. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video on ECED and sequencing this slightly tweaked version of Long and Steel's Super Emerald design. The PDF of this design is available for anyone to download and the GEMCAD file is available to site members. Special thanks to those whose membership in this site helps me maintain it and to build instructional materials like these videos. If there's something that you want to see a video for, please just ask. I'll do my best to provide what seems most needed by the community.